Hey guys, today I would like to share with you the story of how I made my first 100k. And by 100k, I'm not talking about slowly building wealth, saving up money, and reaching 100k, nor am I talking about how I made my first 100k in revenue, I'm talking about how I made 100k in one single deal. Yes, you heard correctly, 100k of commission in one single deal. And for proof, I'll put it somewhere here. And so listen carefully and let's begin. All right, so let's start with the backstory. This all happened a few years ago during my first year as the financial advisor. At that time, I was in my early 20s. I didn't quite have enough experience, even though I was licensed, right? While my clients or prospect at that time was in his mid 40s and he already had an existing advisor. So how did I do it? Well, it all happened in a January, I was eating lunch with him and he asked me, how was I doing? And I told him I was doing pretty well. I just started my career as a financial advisor and learning a lot, helping a lot of people. It's great. And then he was like, oh, that's good. Oh. And then eventually as the conversation went on, he asked me if I wanted to look at his portfolio and see what I thought. So he showed me it on his phone. I looked at it. It was pretty decent, pretty good. I'd say it was pretty good actually and the returns are good and everything was good. But one thing stood out to me was that I asked them, I was like, I see you have your non-reg account, your RSP, but where is your TFSA? He looked at me kind of funny. He was like, what, what do you mean? Like, what, what is a TFSA? And I explained to him, it's a tax-free savings account where you can put in money to invest. It grows tax-free and when you take it out, it's tax-free, right? A tax-free savings account. And he was kind of shocked. He was like, wow, this thing sounds amazing. Like I never heard of it. Like what's the downside to it? And I told him, well, the downside is there's a contribution limit. There's, at that time, you can only put in $57,500. And then he was like, okay, well, can you help me? And I was like, sure. Uh, how about you come to my office tomorrow and I'll help you set up an account. So he came, he wrote me a check and everything was good. So I fast forward a few months and I messaged him, it's RSP season, due date is coming up soon, have you done it? And he was like, no, I haven't done it, but I'll let my advisor know and then, yeah, thanks for letting me know. I was like, okay, all right. And a few days later, he contacted me saying that his advisor is out of town and if I could help him. So once again, I helped him set up an account and things were good. Now fast forward about half a year later, I was eating lunch with him again. I showed him the portfolio and he said everything was good. And then the conversation came to about estate planning. So I asked him, I was like, well, since you have so much assets, well, at that time he probably had about nine digits of asset. His income is like eight digits or seven to eight digits. I asked him, I was like, well, how's your estate planning, right? He was like, well, I'm relatively young. I'm only in my forties and I feel like it's still a little early, right? So I asked him, well, do you know the process of it? Do you know how long it takes and what happens, right? He was like, not really, can you explain? So I explained to him that a uh, typical family in um, BC, it takes about after you pass away and you collect all the documents and you submit it to the government, it takes about 12 months for everything to process, for the probate to go through. And uh, there's about a six months holding period that the executor should hold their money just in case any creditor comes up. And if anyone comes up and want to go to court, the average wait time for court in British Columbia is 24 months, right? So it was a long time. If you add it together, it almost takes four years if something goes wrong. And he was like, wow, that seems like a very long time. I was like, well, yeah, that's just how, the, how it is. And I was like, well, did you also know that the day you pass away is also the day you pay the most tax, right? And you had to pay quite a lot of tax considering how much asset you had and it's actually all quite complicated. So in your case, it's actually very complicated, right? And he, was, and he thought about it, he was like, yeah, I, I have a lot of assets. I have like five children and then he was divorced once and remarried. So he could see that it was gonna be very complicated. So I asked him, how are you gonna solve this? And he thought about it and then he couldn't come up with a solution. So he asked me, what would I recommend? And I said, well, I don't know, right? I don't have enough information to give you a recommendation because in order to do estate planning, you'll probably need to know everything as a big picture, right? So I would need more info and I probably need to go home and think about it. And he agreed. So he asked me, what do I need? And I collected the details, I did my fact finding and I went home. And the first thing I did when I went home was that I called the most experienced advisor at my brokerage, 
which happens to be my mentor. And I asked her if she could help me and she said sure. And then the next day I went to the office and we worked on a case together. We put together a proposal about this thick, like a huge binder. And then I set up a meeting with my clients and we, the three of us met up. During the meeting, he liked what we talked about and he thought it was very, very great. Like it was the best thing he ever heard in his life or something. And he said he'll need to think about it. And we said, okay, go home and think about it, right? So he went home. I'm pretty sure he asked like his other financial advisor, he asked his lawyer, his accountant, what they thought. And they all thought it was pretty good, right? So he came back and then we did everything for him and we closed the case everything was smooth, right? So let's now break down the story and see why it was it so smooth the whole time. Well, it happened because I followed two basic concepts that everyone in our business should know, which is one is always sell by your client's needs, always put your best interest first, and two is to build trust. And for the first part, um, imagine like when I first met up to him, I gave him a pitch of what I do. I say, I do blah, 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 blah can I help you? He'll probably be like, nah, it's okay. Um, I already have a financial advisor and it's all good, right? So instead of me pushing my services to him, I asked powerful questions that made him think of his problems and let him come to the conclusion himself that this in fact is a problem and he needs to solve it, right? Therefore he asked me to help because I was the one who recognized these problems to begin with. Like, if his financial advisor did this proper job of fact finding and see and find that he doesn't have a TFSA, um, he has estate planning problems, then he could have done it like the first time, right? And number two is to build trust. And back in January, I knew that there was a lot of potential of money to be made. However, I wanted to start small and build trust, right? This client had about eight digits of income a year and to him, $57,500 is actually not a lot of money. So he felt that he could trust me with something small and I delivered on what he wanted and I produced a good result. And I follow up with him regularly and update on things that he might need. And the second part is that we all know the elephant in the room is that he and I both know that I am new in this field and there's no way I have enough experience nor the skills to solve his problems. So what I did was I put his best interest forward and I found the most suitable person to help us, which is my mentor. And together we made the best proposal and that helped us build trust. So I started small and I leveraged more experienced advisors to help me to solve this problem. All right, and that's it for today's video. In my next video, I'll talk about the business model I learned and used from my mentors they're both MDRT, one is CLT and one is TLT, if you know. Top of the table is TLT members are the best advisors in the whole world. There's probably only like 30 to maybe 40 of them in the entire province. In my next video, I'll share his business model of how he built his business up. So if you're a financial advisor and you like this video, uh, please click like and subscribe for more future videos that will help. And if you're not a financial advisor, I hope this helps. I would like you to share this video with other financial advisors that you know and see if this helps them. All right, thanks for watching and see you next time.